Hi, today I'd like to talk about stenosis and the treatment that I'm recommending for your problem. Stenosis, of course, I'll give you a little overview. It's a narrowing of the spinal canal or one of the canals that the nerves that go out to your legs uh, may be trapped in. And this is due to a number of factors, but most likely overgrowth of the bone, uh, either congenital or something that's developed with time may be contributed to by some spurs. The disc can also be uh, in, you know, involved in this as well in competing for space with the nerves. So what is it that we're actually doing in this type of procedure called a laminoforaminoplasty? Well, the lamino refers to a portion of the spine. This is the lamina here. And then foramino, the foramino canal is a portion of the spine where the actual nerve comes out. So there's two tunnels. One is the big tunnel, the large tunnel, the central canal tunnel. And then the other one is the little tunnel off to the side where the nerves exit to go to your legs. So in, in this particular situation, one of these canals is too tight. And the way that I relieve them is actually by using a tube about, this is 14 millimeters, not quite, not the size of a dime. Actually push through the skin, a little less than an inch incision, goes down here. And I can deliver the instruments, uh, telescope, TV camera, light source, suction and high-speed burrs or little cutting instruments down here to actually start to remove a portion of the lamina, uh, whatever portion we've determined is uh, causing the stenosis or the narrowing of your spinal canal. So as we kind of come down through here and just start to remove the bone, uh, that actually opens up the uh, space, creates space for the nerves traveling through that area and uh, al allows relief of the pressure on the nerves. Um, what are the things that can go wrong here? Well, certainly there's a, bleeding is a possibility. It's actually uh, uh, really fairly rare that you get any significant bleeding, but uh, uh, it's, it's really, I've never transfused anybody after one of these cases, so it's, uh, most of the time it runs a few table, a couple tablespoons uh, of blood. If there's anything more than that, uh, it, it can run up a little bit more, but actually it's quite unusual. Uh, hematoma could form afterward. Uh, rare that you have to do anything about it, but uh, that is a possibility with any type of surgery, anytime you make a skin incision. Next uh, complication is uh, that of infection. Anytime you make a, a skin incision, in the, you, you can have an infection. So a stitch can be infected, uh, you can have superficial infections, uh, and you can have a deeper infection. Deep infection here, very rare. Uh, if I've seen, geez, if I've seen maybe two or three over the past several years, that would be, uh, that's as much as I can remember. And the infections are almost, if they're deep, I can almost always assure they're involved with the disc space, uh, having removed some disc material. The disc is, uh, disc space has got a very, very tricky environment, low oxygen, poor blood supply. It's a great place for an infection to set itself up. Uh, although I mentioned that they're uh, very rare and they seem to uh, rise up or become you know, known in about two weeks after the surgery. So it's nothing that came from the instruments or the operating room. It's just these bugs circulate around in our bloodstream uh, after we uh, scratch our skin or brush our teeth, these kind of things. Any kind of manipulation of our soft tissues that are kind of potentially contaminated uh, can cause a little seeding of the bloodstream. And uh, these may not always be picked up immediately by the white blood cells allowing them to float around, and if they get stuck in, in a freshly operated kind of site like this with a poor blood supply, an infection could ensue. Um, next is a nerve injury. Of course, you're actually you know, right on top of the spinal cord here. Uh, you can see in here that the spinal cord is here. Uh, pretty rare. Uh, one of the things I really like about uh, operating under conscious sedation is the fact that the nerves are uh, in a situation where people are going to tell me that I'm getting close. They'll say, geez, I can feel a little pain here, there. It means I have to go slower. So nerve injury, uh, really very uncommon. I mean, not even that I can remember in someone who does not have previous open surgery. In that case, uh, again, pretty rare because the person's awake and is going to tell me. But uh, if you have scar tissue just caked around all the regular nerves, uh, they're more susceptible to injury. More common than that is the uh, dural leak happens maybe maybe 1% of the time if they've had no previous surgery and about 2 to 3% of the time if persons had previous surgery and were doing a revision case and that's just the the dural is the uh, it's the wrapping or the little paper thin coating around the spinal cord or the nerves that comprise the spinal cord 
and if it's pa paper thin <clears throat> or if the uh, person has such stenosis that it's sticking to the uh, actual uh, dura when you try to pull away the stuff that's causing the problem if it's really attached and socked to the uh, dura uh, you can get a small dura leak. These are repaired on the table uh, it doesn't require anything more than just a few hours of laying down uh, it, it, no, that's really what it's turned out to be. These tears are very small I'm looking at everything under three and a half microscope power so uh, quite quite unusual that it causes any significant problems for people except a headache uh, is pretty common but goes away within about a day. So uh, this procedure uh, I think it's not really a complication but a statistic and I think that the success of this operation is determined in large part by the location whether it's a uh, cervical, thoracic or lumbar and uh, I think the lumbar with all the weight of the torso being pushed against it uh, works this works about 70 75 maybe up to 80 percent of the time depending on where the operation is being performed so it's not really a complication it's more of a st statistic and that is that it doesn't work hundred percent of the time so I think it's worth knowing that uh, and there's uh, certain reasons that this might be the case but just let it be known that it doesn't work hundred percent of the time and may not give 100% relief of the pain although oftentimes it's so significantly better as to be people just say well geez it's, it's so much better than it was it's negligible my, my current pain that I get is just negligible so that kind of uh, discusses the uh, laminal foraminoplasty and if you've got any further questions about this is a, it's been a little instructional session gives you a little time to think about things if you've got any other questions please uh, don't hesitate to ask alright thanks